In mechanics, there are often multiple forces acting on a single object, which makes it very important for us to be able to draw a diagram that helps us to understand those forces and how they relate to each other. So there are largely two main types of diagrams that we do. The most common one, though, is the free body diagram. What the free body diagram does is it simplifies the drawing by starting out with the assumption that the object can be condensed to a single point or a dot. This normally represents the center of mass of that object. And then all forces must be drawn pointing away from that center of mass. So for example, we know that the gravitational force acting on this object over here, we are, for just for interest sake, we are dealing with this object over here. It is a dog that is being pulled by its owner. And what we can see is that there's a force of gravity that acts downward on the center of mass of this object. We also know that since this dog is standing on the ground, we know that there is going to be a normal force that the ground exerts upward on this object. And then we can see that there is a tension force, the force that the leash is exerting on that object, the tension force there that is acting at some angle. We are allowed to indicate that angle if it is known in this diagram. And finally, we can see that this object is not moving, which means that there must be some kind of frictional force acting on this object. And we know that frictional forces always act opposite to the direction of motion and parallel to the slope. What we can see here is we have now drawn a free body diagram. It is important to label this free body diagram with a key so that anyone reading it would know that Fg represents the force of gravity, T represents the tension, N represents the normal force, and F represents the frictional force, and that must be included in the key. A couple of important notes here. You may not draw components of forces onto a free body diagram. So there's a tension force acting at an angle. You may not show the horizontal and vertical components of that tension force because you are then implying that those forces are also acting on this object. Another thing you may not do is you may not draw arrows that end on this center of mass. The arrows must always be directed away from that object. And then finally, when drawing free body diagrams, you can, if there are two forces acting in the same direction, you can draw them or represent them in the following way you show that it is an arrow that acts in the same direction. The other common type of diagram is known as a force vector diagram. This one gives a bit more information in that it shows where and how the forces act on that object. So we would now simplify the object to a block and you show the direction that the force acts. So you would show that this tension force acts on the corner of the object and it acts upward at an angle. The difference now is that we know the frictional force acts along the bottom surface of this object. We know that the force of gravity acts from the center of mass of that object. And we know that the normal force also acts on the bottom surface. So you would label this object. And so this is a force vector diagram. Again, a key is important. But what we are showing here is we are showing where the forces act as well as the direction in which those forces act. But once again, the free body diagram is the far more common one, where you show vectors only pointing away from the diagram, you show the object as a center of mass or as a single dot, and you represent it with a key, and you make sure that you do not ever show any components of forces on that diagram.